Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the shop. Got a really cool project for you guys today. I mean, you guys already know what it is. You've read the title, but I'm going to be making a gold-plated Iron Man helmet. So as an aerospace engineer in training, it's kind of inevitable that my favorite superhero would be Iron Man, since he's the engineer who builds all the cool stuff that flies, which is what I'd like to do someday. So a couple of years ago, I made this Iron Man helmet. This is the Iron Man Mark III helmet from the first movie. I 3D printed it off some, someone else's CAD model, but this is all just spray paint. It fits on my head. Turned out pretty well. But I had the idea a few years ago to actually make a gold-plated one. So I thought a gold-plated Iron Man helmet would be really cool. Because in the movie, as you may know, uh, Iron Man's suit is a gold titanium alloy. Let's connect to the Cisco, have it reconfigure the shell metals, use the gold titanium alloy from the Seraphim tactical satellite. That should ensure fuselage integrity while maintaining power to weight ratio, got it? Which, this plastic has no gold in it. So I thought I'd make an actual gold one. So in this video, I'm going to be making the Mark 50 helmet from Avengers Infinity War. So I've got the Mark 3 and then the Mark 50. So I'll 3D print the helmet like this one off Thingiverse. I'll put a link to the cat in the description. And then I'm gonna be using 23 karat gold leaf to gold leaf the face. So actually from the point of filming this intro, I started this project 10 months ago and kind of dropped it for about eight months, but it's finally back. Let's get this thing finished. It's gonna be awesome. So I'm gonna send you guys back 10 months to when I started this project. So because I don't have the time to fully CAD this helmet myself, and I'm not quite good enough at CAD. I'm getting my, this design from Thingiverse, from this guy, D-Mask Props. He has some really good stuff. This is my first print of his. So he's got the full Mark 50. He's also got the Mark 85, but I like the Mark 50 a little more. Uh, so downloaded all the files. I'll put a link to all this in the description. And I just pull it up. He's already sliced it all up, so I'm just gonna stick in part one. So this part is part of the chin. Here, I can show you where it goes. It goes right about here on the helmet. This is gonna be a bunch of prints. As you can see this part's gonna take five hours to print because I'm doing this at a, up here, I'm doing this at a 0.1 millimeter layer height. So each layer is 0.1 millimeters thick. I'm doing that because I'm gonna have to sand this and paint it and I want it to look really good. Smaller layers mean I have to sand less later. I'm just gonna be printing this with a brand new a gray PLA. First layer down and sticking good. Only 1,097 to go. After almost an entire day, prints are done. They look pretty good. It's gonna take some cleanup. Gotta take the sports off. It's gonna be a lot of sanding, but it's looking pretty good. Where does this go? There, that's the the bottom of the front of the face. There's the chin. Another part done. Parts. It's a 22 hour print. Got half the face. Last of the prints are done. So it's been about three days of printing. I've got all 12 parts printed. It took forever. As you can see, like there's the top of the helmet right there. Now I gotta clean up all the supports, clean up the edges so I can glue it together. I'll just be using just, uh, super glue. So I got all the edges cleaned up, support cleaned off and sanded, took forever. But now it's time to glue it all together. For this, I'm just gonna be using this cyanoacrylate super glue and this activator that makes it cure instantly. So I'll just put one on each side, shove them together, and hopefully I don't mess it up. assembled. It doesn't look great at the moment because you got all these gaps in it from prints being a little off. Got all these crazy seams and holes. So that's, that's gonna need a lot of bondo and cleanup. But in general it's looking good. I did I think I lost some skin off my fingers from the super glue. It's a slight problem with this helmet. It's looking good. It does need a lot of cleanup on it. See this all right in the middle of the face. Big problem is it doesn't fit on my head and I really want to wear this. But I've done the measurements, and I only actually need it to be about an inch wider 
in, in the side to side dimension. Forward to back, it should be fine. So I just need to stretch it a tiny bit. So what I'm gonna do is I got my heat gun here, which those who don't know, this is basically just a hair dryer on steroids. It blasts out air at about a thousand degrees on high. So I'll use this to soften up the plastic on the sides, and I'm just gonna try to stretch the helmet a little bit. See if I can get it fit over my head without ruining the look. Trying to heat it evenly so that it doesn't get any weird warping in it. Hopefully it'll look generally the same when I'm done. Heat it up. I'm just gonna try and stretch it just a little bit. So after messing around with the heat gun for a bit, I was able to stretch it out a little bit. I don't know if you can kind of see that, it's a little flared out. So it fits, it's better, but it still does not fit at all. And I can tell that I'm not gonna be able to get any more stretching out of this, but I still wanna wear it. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna try and split this seam right here. I'll split it to maybe about here, and I'll try and clamshell it open a little bit and just put little spacers in here. I'll be able to finish and you won't even be able to see it when I'm done. But hopefully, by clamshelling out the back, I'll be able to get it over my head. And I may have to split this seam too, and pull this out, not sure yet. But I'm gonna start with this seam, see if I can get it on my head, pulling this a not crazy amount apart, and see what happens from there. I've just gone ahead and taken off the back of the helmet completely, split it into two parts. So this should be not too difficult to patch back. So now I'm just gonna try and make it fit to my face this way. See if my ears are kind of stuck here. So I'm gonna use the heat gun, stretch this out, get it, get this part to fit, and then I'll use filler and stuff to get these to fit back on after that. And now it's close. There we go. Got it on my face. Out. So my head fits in. Just barely, but it does fit in. I've got this wooden dowel to hold the dimensions. Now I need to somehow get these on. I need to have a little bit of a gap here, but it's hard to tell exactly how much. I've cut these pieces of wood and we use those little spacers. So I'm just gonna quickly tack these in with a little bit of super glue. And now that I got my spacers in, these are just estimated spacers. I really hope that they're big enough width. I'm gonna try and tack this down right here. I don't have a lot of surface area to glue with. So we'll stick these two in here. Now, I've got these huge holes. Luckily, they're not, there's no like real detail here. There's just some, some lines, to be easy to fix. But these holes are kind of huge. So what I'm gonna try and do actually, is right here, I've got 3D printing pen. Basically, it's, it's like an extruder on a 3D printer. You stick filament in here and you just press a button and it's completely freehand, so I'm basically gonna weld these together with plastic. I'm just gonna go up, start at the top, just shoot the molten plastic in here. It's not the prettiest, but that's actually working really well. It'll sand down nicely. Now I just gotta do all of this. I'll just cut through it, you don't have to watch me do it all. So it took a while, but I've now filled in all the gaps with various colors of PLA. It's pretty ugly. I wasn't able to get a nice bead going like with a welder. You can see like here, there's gonna be some cleanup there. I'm gonna need to join those two together. And I'll probably need to bond, put Bondo into this too. Okay, I'm really happy with this. It was completely successful. I can now get this on my head and it doesn't look too off. I mean, right now you have all the weird colors and roughness and here it's, it's really ugly at the moment, but nothing about your sanding can't help. Fits on my head now. This is awesome. This thing looks really ugly now. I've got these massive uh, welds, I guess you'd call them. They're basically welds, plastic welds. I've got, like, here, for an example, right here. This is a supposed to be a continuous line straight through there, and it is no longer. I've also got weird shapes here. It just doesn't look right in a lot of places. Okay, so to fix this, I'm gonna be using Bondo. The Bondo is, it's like a putty used for, I think it's supposed to be used for fixing dents in cars and doing body work like that. What I'm gonna do, mix up a bunch of this, slather it on, on every place that doesn't look right, anywhere there's a crack or a hole or just a weird shape that I wanna get rid of, just slather it on. And then once this stuff dries, it sands really nicely. And that way I can get this thing to look perfect 
even though I have to do all this crazy modification to it to get it to fit on my head. Just take blobs of it and slide it on. It doesn't need to be neat or anything because I'm going to sand it all afterwards. So I applied the Bondo everywhere on all the seams. So now it's time to sand this down, make it look round, and see how many more coats on this I'm going to have to apply. So as you can see, this stuff sands really nicely. I just have to do that all over. I'm finishing up for the day, completely covered in Bondo. As you can see, it's looking a little bit cleaner and smoother. Got this area done. It just gets rid of the scratches. The areas like here, where I'm gonna put more Bondo in. Pretty much, I'm just using 80 grit sandpaper right now. I'm gonna get the shape down. I still have to get that curve in there. I've got general shapes fixed, got it mostly smoothed out. But it's gotten to the point where I can't really see where the problem areas are anymore. Just because there's too much going on. So what I'm gonna do is just hit it with this filler primer. This is basically filling all the little holes from the printing, from the sanding. And I can go in once this dries and I can sand this and make it look even better. Okay, so the filler primer is dry. You can still see these lines everywhere from the build lines, little areas where I didn't fully fill it in. There's areas where it doesn't look super great. So what I'm gonna do, rather than sanding, I'm just gonna take this pocket knife it's not even sharp and I'm just going to use it to scrape along the build lines like this. this is a little method I developed for smoothing out prints after the priming. It's a quick little explanation of what I'm doing. So when you have a 3D print this is what the cross section kind of looks like roughly. Each bump is a one of the layers from the 3D print so you get all these ridges. I mean you could sand them off but it's it's really annoying to sand that much. So when you spray on the filler primer it creates a thick layer on top. It's smoother, but it's still pretty bumpy. Take the knife and scrape across and knock down to the tops of the plastic ridges, leaving the filler primer in all these little holes, exposing the tips of the ridges, giving me a perfectly smooth surface. So here's a spot I've already done. It's looking a lot smoother versus where I haven't done it. You can still see all the lines. So it's been about a week and a half of sanding. I've just been sanding on it whenever I've had time. Probably a few hours of work over the past week and a half into this. It's pretty smooth. These areas right here are just where some of the is showing. That's actually very smooth. It fits on the Mark 50 helmet. There's actually a bit of silver in here. Unlike the other, uh, the earlier helmets, which are just red and gold. This one's got silver in here. And for the weathering, you want to have some, a silver base coat so you can scuff it off. So I'm gonna do the entire helmet in silver. I'm just using this little Rustoleum metallic silver. It's gonna hit the entire thing with silver. Let me do one or two coats of silver. And then I'll go on to the more precisely placed paint. So there's one downside to silver paint. It shows every single imperfection. So every little bit of sanding I kinda of messed up. So like I this is just the base coat. The red will not show up as much. Hopefully the gold won't pick it up after a couple layers of paint. I've got several layers of silver paint on it now. And it's pretty smooth. The face is pretty smooth. There are some weird areas on the side, but it looks pretty good. And I'm gonna tape off these areas here on the side and do a red for the entire thing. Yeah, so I did it off camera because it took a while. But I've got blue painter's tape in the areas I wanna keep silver. But so it's time to hit the entire thing with red even the parts that will be gold. The red will be a good base coat for the gold. All right, so that's all dry now. Got the helmet fully painted red, it's nice and smooth. So now it comes the best part, peeling off the tape. Looks pretty good. I'm gonna have to weather it a bit to blend those lines in. Maybe a little bit of touch up on some of these edges like right in there. That'll all come later. Well, now it's eight months later. I've grown a beard for continuity purposes to show that time has passed. And this project has been sitting for eight months, not being worked on. Uh, it's a bunch of different reasons. School, quarantine, uh, the fact that 
I'm using real 23 karat gold leaf on this, which is a little stressful for me since this stuff is expensive. But it is finally time to actually gold leaf this helmet. So the nice thing about this particular project is that there are two ways that I could finish this. I could either have this be a pristine brand new one, or since this is a helmet that Iron Man uses in battle, I can make it look a little beat up. So the way that gold leafing turns out will determine which method I finish this helmet in. The moment, I don't know. If it turns out super nice, I will make this a perfectly pristine, brand new looking helmet, which will be awesome. And if it turns out looking really weird, I'll just make it look battle damaged. Not insanely, but a little bit. So earlier you saw me paint this entire helmet silver underneath the red. So because I have the silver paint underneath the red, if I take some high grit sandpaper and scuff it, it'll look like it's a metal helmet that has the paint scuffed off of it, even though this thing's plastic. So I have never gold leafed with real gold. I have practiced a bit with some fake gold leaf, some really cheap fake gold leaf, which wasn't behaving very well. And I'm hoping that that was just because it was cheap fake gold leaf. All right, so I brought you in closer. So the helmet is ready as far as I know. I heard somewhere that red is a great base coat for gold leaf. I don't remember exactly where it was, but I'm gonna go with it since the rest of the helmet is gonna be red anyway. So in case you're curious, what I'm using, so I've got this is my gold leaf, you can see right here, it is 23 karat gold. And I've bought these um, cheap makeup brushes that I'm going to use to put the gold on, essentially. And then I've got this other brush for the glue, so I've got the leafing glue and a cup of soapy water for the glue brush. And I'm going to be masking off everywhere that I don't want gold just to be safe. And I'll be wearing rubber gloves for the actual leafing because that seems like a good idea. So it has this nice line around it already from the print. So this area will be gold. The gold will come up all the way to back here and then we'll go all the way down to here. So this is a lot of gold. I'm a little nervous about this area because I, I don't know how well that's going to go. We'll see. But I don't, know, I, I don't know why I always pick huge projects for my first of a specific type. So this is the most pain in the ass masking job I've ever done, but it is done. You can see I've masked up everywhere on the edge of the gold. Uh, the technique I settled on was to actually use the grooves that are already here from the print. I just taped over them and I used a razor blade to score down the groove and then just cut it. But it is now time to actually put real gold on this thing. A little nervous because this is such an expensive thing to mess up. This is by, I'd say by volume and weight, this is the most expensive thing I've ever used. I have worked on materials that I used enough of them that cost more than the amount of gold I'm using. But for the amount, this stuff is the most expensive stuff I've ever worked with. I'm not gonna open it yet, I'm not gonna use it, but you can see the size. Each of these sheets, I think there's 25 or 30 sheets in here. I can't remember the exact number of sheets, but each sheet is a little over $2 and they're thinner than paper, and I don't remember the exact dimensions, but this big, to compare to my hand. So hopefully I don't need to use all of them, and I can save some for a future project. I'm gonna start right here in the middle, since it's the smoothest area, so I can get some practice before I move up to the harder areas, like right around the eyes, and especially these vents. Kinda look like knackers for an airplane. I'll put a link to everything I'm using in the description, so if you wanna do that, something similar, you can use what I'm using, although I'm no expert. So I'm not gonna try and leave this all at once, because that seems like a bad idea. The way this glue works is you paint it on, you let it dry, and then you put the gold on. I'm just gonna do one sheet first by itself, and then hopefully it goes well, and then I'll move on to doing more. Okay, and I got some soapy water here since this is glue. And now I just wait for this to dry. So as you can see, it's a little bit of a milky color once it goes clear. That's when I can put on the gold. Since it's a warm day, this stuff dried very quickly. My first piece, 23 karat gold going on. Here we go. This one. Lay this on. I've got my large makeup brush. And I'm just 
Let's take it down. I am completely self-taught in leafing. I've done a little bit of practice with fake gold leaf, and the rest is self-taught off YouTube. There we go. I'll definitely need to put more into the face slit, as I believe he calls it in the movie. I'll give you guys a closer look. Doesn't look half bad. You've seen one go on, it's not that different. I'm just gonna go to time lapse. But here's a closer view. As you can see, this is gonna need a little bit more work, but that should be fine. I'll go over it again. But these nice big areas here are looking great. Now I just need to make sure that I can blend the edge as well. Supposedly, it just blends nicely. We'll see. So the first layer of gold is on. It's looking really good. So actually what I've discovered is that real gold leaves the best. Uh, the fake stuff was wrinkling and seams were showing up, but since real gold is so malleable, it just blends in. I, I still am gonna try and polish it with something. I've seen people use cotton balls or something like it. The next step for me is to go in and clean up places that I missed. So there are little spots. There's one where I missed a bit of the gold. As I've discovered, I can just go back over it. So I'll find a spot that needs more gold, just put a little more glue on it. All right, so off camera, I did the touch up. It's looking better up here. There's still some spots I missed, but at the moment it's looking okay. I may go back in, but right now it is time for the best part, removing the masking tape. Now this is very expensive masking tape now, as it has real gold on it. Unfortunately, it's not enough to save. Yeah, it's not a bad edge for, for first try. Looking pretty good. I may end up going weathered just to hide imperfections. There's still some weirdness in some corners, like right there. Definitely some paint touch up needed there. But overall, it's looking pretty good. I am thinking that I'm gonna go weathered though, a little bit, just to hide some of the imperfections, like the fact that the line isn't perfectly straight. So before I actually get to any weathering, I'm gonna go through with this paintbrush and I'm gonna paint black into this ridge around the gold. It'll help get rid of the little imperfections and make it a more crisp line. There we go. Put the black in the edge, making it pop a little more. And now I'm just gonna continue doing this and get like, just, I'm just gonna go everywhere basically with the black, get some nice weathering in. I mean, it just because it's not that interesting to watch, but this is the what it looked like before, and this is kind of what it looks like after. So I'm just kind of adding a bit of black paint, wiping it off, adding a bit of grime. It can look a little bit used. Now there's a little bit more. Just I just did some black paint, wiped it off. A little bit more to go. Now I'm gonna try and remove some of the red paint. You can see some of it's already removed. It'll look kind of like that. What I've got here is some 400 grit sandpaper. I'm just gonna go through and just think about like where Iron Man might have gotten hit. Like say he got hit here. So I'm gonna just lightly sand this edge. As you can see, it's starting to show the silver through it. Superheroes get punched in the face all the time. Let's knock some of this off. Make sure it's not even, because natural weathering is not even. There we go, I like that one. It's subtle, but it helps add realism of how this is supposed to turn out. With the paint underneath and the top coming off, it looks, it's exactly replicating what would happen if you had a piece of painted metal that got scratched. And then this other bits around here will get blended in once I put the clear coat on. All right, I have now weathered it. You can see the, the scuffs, just some minor scuffing. The final step, I got some crystal clear enamel here. So I'm just gonna hit the whole thing, uh, protect the gold and the paint, and also hopefully fill in those extra little scuffs around the silver that I don't really actually want. There we go. Make it nice and shiny. I don't know how well it's showing up on camera, but the 
clear coat's really helping the gold to like in a pot more. So even if I wasn't trying to protect it from being handled, I think the clear coat really helps just the look. Clear coat helps the look of a lot of things. If you've seen my engraving aluminum, where I engraved uh, Starman from SpaceX on a piece of aluminum, the clear coat on that project really helps. I'll put a link to it in the description. Check that out. Photo engraving with a laser cutter. Just gonna let that dry. Cue the glamour shots with my cover of the Avengers theme on Kazoo. <laughs> Mark 50 helmet is finally done. It only took me 10 months to do. It was about an eight month gap in the middle where I didn't work on it. But yep, yeah, it does fit on my head. Looks pretty cool. So as you can maybe tell, it is a tight fit on my head. The cat I used was a little bit small. The interior was about the right size, but the hole in the bottom was not big enough to fit my head in. So I did consider making back half clamshell out. I've seen people do that, put magnets in it, but then I have an ugly scene. I thought about just making this little bottom piece clamshell out, but instead I, as you saw, I just went for splitting it and filling it in, making it bigger and stretching it, which turned out pretty well. You can't tell that I did it. It doesn't look deformed or anything, unless you look really closely, but you will. If you like this project, hit the like button. If you're new here, hit the subscribe button. I've got tons more cool projects coming even cooler than this. I've actually got one that's I've been working on for a year that's even cooler than this. Uh, th this one's pretty cool. So hit the subscribe button to stay up to date with that. You can follow me on Instagram at Into the Wood Shop for more projects. I do a lot of smaller projects just on Instagram. So hope you enjoy the video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.